Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight, from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark cards bring you McDonald Carey in Preble's Boys on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark brings you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories and presents as your host one of the most distinguished actors of the American theater, Mr. Lionel Barrymore. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Lionel Barrymore. Tonight on Hallmark Playhouse, we're telling the story of Preble's Boy by Fletcher Pratt. It's a story of the early days of the United States Navy, and we felt it particularly fitting, since it was 177 years ago tomorrow, that the Congress authorized the laying of the keels for the first ships of our Navy. There was a lot of discussion in those days as to the wisdom of this because we had anything but an enviable record on the sea. As a matter of fact, we had a thoroughly miserable record. Of 35 American warships, only one remained in our hands at the end of the Revolution. And John Randolph of Roanoke had this recommendation to offer. We should turn our backs on the sea and abandon any contest with the shark. <laughs> well, the only disagreement with his statement came from some of the people in the story you're about to hear. And as our guest tonight, we are happy to welcome to Hallmark Playhouse, MacDonald Carey. And now, here's Frank Goss from the makers of Hallmark Cars. One of the particular joys of Christmas is sending and receiving Christmas cards. While the pleasure Christmas cards bring can never be measured, isn't it good to know that Hallmark cards are priced the same this year as they were last year, and the year before, and the year before that? And that the quality of Hallmark cards has constantly improved throughout the years? Yes, today, just as for many Christmas seasons, that Hallmark on the back of your card is looked for and welcomed. It tells your friends you cared enough to send the very best. Lionel Barrymore appears by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of the Technicolor musical Everything I Have is Yours, starring Marge and Gower Champion and Dennis O'Keefe. And now, here is the first act of Preble's Boys, starring MacDonald Carey. <laughs> In 1907, Edward Preble came home from sea. His carriage passed through streets that echoed with cheers of welcome on his way to a reception in his honor in the most important house in the land, President's Mansion. He was tired and he was ill, but he never rode more proudly. And what were his thoughts that day? What were his dreams? <laughs> what were his memories? My boys. Now, oh, if my boys were only here to share this moment. If young Decatur were only here, opposite me. Bainbridge beside me. Lawrence, Hull, Jones, Porter, Stewart, Biddle, Warrington. All of them here as they should be. As they should be. No. No, I'm, I'm wrong. They are right now where they should be, on board ship, keeping watch over our shores and our freedom. <sighs> Hardly seems a moment since I was their age. Hardly a moment since I warmed my own heart with the same ardors and followed a flag to the sea. I can see my father now standing before me, a violent issue widening between us. I can still hear his voice thundering at me. Yeah. 
Edward, face facts. This country is never going to have anyone's respect as a naval power. The first sign of a fight, we run like whipped dogs. A ship points a gun at us and our captains run below decks and only come back up to surrender. A navy. Our sailors are the laughing stock of the world. Father, I expect in my lifetime to see our country achieve a navy. A navy of brave ships and men of honor and valor. I intend to devote my life to that end. Well, son, I hoped once to see as much in my lifetime. I hope you will see it in yours. And since you're determined to be a part of that navy, I hope you play a proud and worthy part in it. Thank you, Father. I um, have some papers for you. You'll find them on my desk. Papers? We are pleased to inform you... Father, an appointment as first lieutenant to the Winthrop. I spoke to my old friend, George Little. You'll find him a stern taskmaster, but a good friend. Son, I don't have too much faith in this country being able to produce a navy, but on the other hand, this is a country which young men wrested from the wilderness against overwhelming odds. Perhaps the young men of that country can earn a place of honor for this country on the sea. As a father, I have talked to you of practicalities. Now, as a patriot, I speak to you of dreams. I say to you, go fight for what you believe and do everything in your power to make it come to pass. And so, with the other men of the Winthrop, I went forth to fight for what I believed. We fought for country. We fought for honor. We fought for wild, unleashed, unholy joy of the fight itself. To the West Indies, the East Indies, back and forth we fought our way, protecting our commerce and our shores, establishing the nucleus of a navy, and defending it against all who set their guns against it. My life was ship and sea, storm, and fury unrelieved, until one day when I was home on leave, I met a girl... I've heard much of the brave Lieutenant Preble. I'm honored to make your acquaintance, sir. No ship had sailed my way, had kept me captive. No man had conquered me. But Margaret Deering smiled, and I was conquered. She held out her hand, and I was her captive. I don't want to love you, Edward. I don't want to love you. I don't want to stand on shore watching your sails disappear into the distance waiting with death inside me until I see those sails again. I want a man who belongs to the land, who'll build a home and tend a hearth fire and live there beside me. I told her I'd give up the sea, live wherever she willed. I was young and in love for the first time. I'd served my time at sea. Now I'd belong to the land and to her. <laughs> Remember her smile as I told her that. Edward, darling. The first morning a wind blew from the sea, you'd feel shackled by the land and a woman. You're to see President Adams in the morning. See what he has to say to you before you make any rash statement. Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, Mr. Preble. Uh, you've aged a little since we last met. It becomes you. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> I asked you here this morning to tell you how much your country appreciates your services. We're engaged in a desperate struggle for survival. We can't exist as a nation if our ships are going to be captured, our sailors taken and pressed into foreign service, our cargoes confiscated. Our destiny is in the hands of our Navy right now. And when I look at the record of men like you, I believe it is safe there. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Preble, in December, the revenue cutter, the Pickering, will be in port. She has 14 guns and a crew of 70. I'd like to make you her skipper, with the title of Lieutenant Commandant. Will you accept the appointment? I accept, sir. Margaret, I... I don't quite know how to tell you, but... When do you set sail, Edward? December. December. Well, 
We must make plans. There's a lot to be done if we're to have a wedding before December. Margaret. You mean you will marry a seafaring man? My dear, I fell in love with a seafaring man. What else am I to do? Margaret. Oh, my darling. And so, at last, the hour came when I took command of my own ship. My boys didn't think much of me at first. They made that pretty obvious. I insisted on discipline, and that was something they weren't used to. I remember a night off the shores of Morocco. The Moors had taken a ship of ours, and I'd issued orders not to capture, or rather to capture, any ships of theirs afloat, and had set sail for Morocco immediately. On the way, we captured one of their ships and took it just outside the harbor, where we were joined by two other frigates of the American squadron. I stood on deck planning how to handle the Emperor of Morocco when young Stephen Decatur came up to me. Sir, may I ask if it's true that you intend to land and talk to the Emperor tomorrow? I do. May I express an opinion, sir? What is it? The Moors would consider you quite a prize, sir. <laughs> yes, I flatter myself they would. Then do you think it's wise to go among them and it'd be very easy for them to capture you? Why uh, this sudden concern for my safety, Decatur? You and the rest of the boys have little affection for me. And why should you have when it comes right down to it? I've not been easy on you. Affection is one thing. Respect is another. Aye. That it is. The men are all worried about you going ashore, sir. Well, tell the men to worry about how they do their own jobs. I'll worry about mine. Yes, sir. Don't you see, boy? We can't cringe before these fellows. They've taken a ship of ours, captured a crew because they think they can get away with it. Well, they're not going to get away with it. I'm not going to sit out here shivering like a schoolboy while the Emperor decides what to do about us. The only thing to do is plow right in and grab the devil by the horns. And that's exactly what I'm going to do with the Emperor of Morocco. a moment, we'll return to the second act of Preble's Boys, starring McDonald Carey. If you like to buy Christmas cards the convenient, thrifty way in boxed assortments, here's something good to know. The brand new collections of Hallmark cards and boxes have arrived at your favorite store. One glance will convince you that this year's group is the best ever. Colors are fresh and bright, designs are new and unusual, and the quality meets the fine standards of all Hallmark cards. For instance, you can find paintings by Grandma Moses, Norman Rockwell, Winston Churchill, and other famous artists. Charming Prince by Courier and Ives. Readings with verses by Edgar Guest or James Metcalf, two of America's best-loved poets. And a host of traditional Yuletime themes, from Jolly Santas to Winter Snow Scenes. What's more, Hallmark Christmas cards in boxes are so reasonable that your card allowance will stretch way beyond your expectations. You can choose assortments for as little as one dollar, some even at 59 cents a box. And here's a tip. An extra box of Hallmark cards will come in mighty handy for last-minute remembrances. And always, the Hallmark on the back of each card you mail will tell your friends you cared enough to send the very best. Now back to Lionel Barrymore in the second act of Pebbles Boys, starring McDonald Carey. From the sea had come home at last, and as Edward Preble rode between the crowds that had gathered in his honor, his eyes dimmed with tears. His mind raced back across the years gathering. Memories and faces swam before him. The face of the Emperor of Morocco. How many years is it since I walked alone into his palace? How many years? 
since I gazed into those sharp, beady eyes, listened to that cool, slightly mocking voice. Well, Commodore Preble, I must say you astound me, sir. I certainly never expected to entertain you in my palace. Your men have captured a ship of ours. You hold a, her crew imprisoned at Mogador, and I want that ship back and the crew released. Well, now that might be arranged. In exchange for a small payment of certain tribute. I'm not here to offer tribute, Your Majesty. I'm here to demand the release of our men. You are here to demand. <laughs> you are amazing, Commodore. You are here in my palace. My men surround you. You are alone, unarmed. <laughs> what makes you think you are in a position to demand anything? May I respectfully suggest that Your Majesty look out there in the harbor? Huh? You uh, see my squadron, of course. And if you look closely, you will see that her guns are manned and aimed directly at us. At you, as well as at me. Nevertheless, my crew has orders to fire if I do not return in an hour and to keep firing until your city is in ruins. Huh. Now, if you look again, huh? just, just beyond my ships, you may see another ship, a Moorish ship. Huh? No, 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 no. Not there, a little more to the left. Huh. You have captured a Moorish ship. An excellent ship and a good crew. Now... I am prepared to trade that ship and crew for hours. <laughs> amazing. Simply amazing. You are my prisoner, and you dare to offer terms to me. You may consider me your prisoner if you like, but uh, do you consider my person worth your city? <laughs> Frankly, no. <laughs> so... What's it to be? Do we reach an amicable agreement, or do we compose ourselves and wait for my ships to start firing? Do you know, Commodore Preble, I'm inclined to like you. You have sailed your ships into my harbor, come alone and unarmed into the jaws of the tiger himself, and I am a tiger, make no mistake about that, and you have won your victory. <laughs> Your ship will be returned in exchange for ours, of course. <laughs> you know, it is rather a pleasure to meet an adversary that one can respect, particularly an American. You'd better take us as friends, Your Majesty, because from now on you're going to find us dangerous as enemies. That's the United States Navy at anchor in your harbor, Your Majesty. The beginning, I believe, of the greatest navy the world will ever know. Those were busy days for us and for my boys. My boys. Decatur, Tripoli, Isaac Hull in the Atlantic... Bainbridge in the Mediterranean, James Lawrence in the South Atlantic. Wherever they sailed, their deeds were proud, accomplished, shining, hard won, but won. Yes, busy days. There was trouble in Tunis, and I was kept hard at work trying to keep the situation under control. Handle my ship, supervise the movements of my squadron, and supervise, too, the whole diplomatic business of the Mediterranean. I was ill, and my illness was growing more and more disturbing. The ship's doctor did his best to keep me in shape, but he was working against overwhelming odds. See here, sir. The place for you is at home. How many times do I have to tell you that? I don't know why you doctors always put on such long faces over everything. I've had these pains for years. Not this bad, you haven't. Well, I'm not as young as I once was. But <laughs> then who is... You're not as young as you used to be either, you know. When are you going home? When I can, when I can. I'm afraid that won't do. You're pretty fond of your wife, aren't you? Of course I'm fond of Margaret. What's Margaret got to do with this? You'd uh, like to see her again, wouldn't you? See her? Again? Doctor, is it that serious? I'm afraid it is. 
Now, will you write to the president, or will I? All right, all right. But I've got to wind up this business with Tripoli first. <laughs> in the reef at three in the morning. Then they will drop anchor and begin firing on the town and the harbor. They won't expect us at night, and they won't be able to take good aim at us in the dark. In the morning, we'll keep up the bombardment. See that the guns are going constantly. Remember, an opponent not under fire becomes very accurate. There's bad weather coming, but now is our hour, and we must carry it. Commodore Preble, I am Captain Samuel Barron, sent to relieve you. Captain Barron? You've done a magnificent job here. It will be impossible to replace you, but I deem it an honor to follow in your footsteps. Thank you, sir. And, Captain Barron, I leave you the finest group of fighting men in the world today. Commodore Preble? Yes, Captain Decatur. Before you on this deck where we've all fought together so many times... Are your comrades in arms? You've been a stern taskmaster, but now looking back, we all see that the sternness and discipline stood us in good stead in time of battle. You've taught us the importance of a navy. You've shown us the conduct that must be expected from the members of that navy. And by your actions, you set standards for us and for all men who follow us to sea. I have here a scroll signed by every surviving member of your boys. We... The undersigned officers of the squadron, late under your command, cannot in justice suffer you to depart without giving you some small testimony of the very high esteem in which we hold you as an officer and a commander. My boys. My boys. The official carriage taking Edward Treble to the executive mansion pulled up to the door and stopped. And the President of the United States came forward to take his arm and usher him in. President Thomas Jefferson. Commodore Preble, the entire nation joins me in honoring you today. You and your men have wiped out our Navy's previous record of cowardice, disgrace, and incompetence. You have, by precept and victory, laid the foundation for what I am confident will be one of the greatest navies of all history. Mr. President, thank you on my own behalf and on behalf of my men. It's good at the end of a life such as mine to know the caliber of the men who guard democracy on the seas. I tell you, they are all that a nation could hope for in her sons and all that a people must honor. Their deeds are eloquent testimony of their valor. Their deeds in time will set the heavens ringing with their names. No man could think more of his own sons than I do of each of them. I'm proud to have served with them, and honored indeed when I hear them referred to as Preble's boys. Donald Carey and Lionel Barrymore will return in a moment. If you're under the impression that Christmas cards with your name imprinted are expensive, here's good news. You can order 25 handsome Hallmark cards complete with your name for as little as $1.95. 
Today I looked over the new series of these personalized cards, and I can tell you the selection is really worth seeing. You'll find styles for yourself, for Mr. and Mrs., and for the children who want to send cards of their own. Distinctive designs by Hallmark artists that your friends will be proud to display all season long. You can choose from humorous themes, old-time Yule Day scenes, or cards that send wishes from our house to your house in the best tradition of Christmas. So why wait to order yours? You'll be smart to make your selections tomorrow at any of the fine stores where Hallmark cards are sold. And when your Christmas cards have the Hallmark on the back, your friends will know instantly you cared enough to send the very best. Here again is Lionel Barrymore. Thank you, McDonald Carey, for a very fine performance on our Hallmark Playhouse tonight. You know, our men in the Navy can be justly proud of the heritage they've received from those heroes and Prebles boys. They certainly can, Lionel, and I'm sure they are. Of course, I, I don't know what they'll think if you're asking a former Marine to play the part of the Commodore, but uh, speaking for myself, I thoroughly enjoyed it, and it was a great honor. Now, that's what we like to hear, Mac. Complete cooperation between all branches of the armed forces. <laughs> so, you know, that reminds me it's getting near the time to mail your Christmas packages to the men and women of the armed forces who are overseas. It's mighty important that they get their Christmas mail in plenty of time for Christmas. It certainly is. I know there's nothing like mail from home when you're overseas. Uh, you uh, Hallmark folks even make special cards to send to people in the armed services, don't you? Oh, we certainly do, Mac, yeah. You'll find Christmas cards and cards for other occasions, like birthdays, made especially to send to men and women in the service. I think that's a fine idea, Lionel. It makes a card mean a lot more, too. Now, um, I understand you've got something rather special on Hallmark Playhouse next week. Well, I think so. Because that's the Sunday before Election Day, and a pretty good time, I think, to tell the life story of a truly great American, Daniel Webster. I certainly agree, but I uh, think it's also rather special for your Hallmark Playhouse friends to know that you're going to play Mr. Webster. I am looking forward to it very much. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I hope you'll be able to listen. I wouldn't miss it for the world. Well, thanks again, Lionel, and good night. Good night, my good night. Good night. Our Hallmark Playhouse is every Sunday. Our producer-director is William Gay. Our music is composed and conducted by David Rose. And our story tonight was adapted by Gene Holloway. Until next Sunday, then, this is Lionel Barrymore saying good night. Look for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. McDonald Carey may soon be seen in the 20th Century Fox production, My Wife's Best Friend. The role of Margaret was played by Barbara Eiler. Others in our cast included Herb Butterfield as the father, Joseph Kearns as Adams, Eddie Firestone as Decatur, Hans Conried as the Emperor, and Ted DeCorsia as Jefferson. Every Sunday, Hallmark Cards present two great programs for the whole family's enjoyment. On radio, the Hallmark Playhouse with host Lionel Barrymore. And on television, outstanding dramatic entertainment on the Hallmark Television Theater. Consult your paper for time and station. Remember, the greatest privilege of a free people is the right to vote. Be sure yours is one of the votes that's counted on November 4th. This is Frank Goss saying goodnight to you all until next week at the same time when Hallmark Playhouse returns to present Lionel Barrymore in the story of Daniel Webster. And the week after that, Herman Peterson's The Covered Bridge, starring Ann Baxter. And the week after that, Bellamy Partridge's Thunder Shower on the Hallmark Playhouse. This is the CBS Radio Network. This is KMBC, Kansas City, Missouri.